What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up Tim's uh, Squirminator fly. This is a pattern by Tim uh, Flagler. He uh, said that this was for competitions. Um, and when you're out to compete, you're out to win. This uh, looks like a squirmy wormy, an egg, it's got hot pink, it's an attractor. Um, this is basically his pattern. I'm only modifying it with one pattern. And also we're using an A-Rex hook. So this is an FW550 size 6. It's barbed. I've tested this. It holds up well. We also have a simper fly. This is a wax thread and an 8 aught. I recommend 8 aught or 6 aught, something heavy, because we're going to be tying in some uh, squirmy, wormy material. And the thicker the thread, uh, the easier it is to not um, pinch it off. So go ahead and start your thread right here behind the bead and uh, snip out your tag end. And then we're going to be building up a little bit of a dam there. I'm just using my Norvice uh, to build that up real nice and easy and quick. I'll check the bead, make sure it's tight, and then I'll work my way back, giving a nice thread base down the shank of this hook because we're going to be attaching that squirmy to this. And I attach mine a little bit different. Um, I do this similar to how I do uh, just a squirmy wormy. We're going to be using the Squirmito. This is uh, by Hairline. These hold up pretty good. They're stretchy. They take a lot of bites. Uh, I've had really good luck with them. And uh, we're just going to cut it in half. Uh, you can also cut it in thirds or in fourths, depending on what size hook you're using, because we're just using this for a tail. And so I'm going to grab this and come up midway up the shank. I want this to be roughly about um, one and a half to two times the length. I'll do pinch wraps. I'm bringing the thread up through my fingers, and then I can pull this up and basically reverse tie back to tighten them, making sure it's on the top of the shank. And I'll do that one more time here. Uh, this way we're not binding down with super tight wraps and then it's just going to sit right on top and I'll go ahead and snip out this little excess here um, to leave a little bit of room for the material we're going to be tying in a little bit later. And so I know when uh, Tim ties this he, he basically pulls it on over the, the hook barb and then, uh, well he uses barbless but and then uh, uses a little bit of super glue to secure it but I'm just using some loose wraps here. I'll wrap underneath it I want it to kind of sit up off the, the shank uh, here uh, as it goes down the bin, but I also want it to be, remain on the top of the shank. That way uh, it just helps prevent it from fouling. And then I'll just clean up this a little bit. I'm not doing super tight thread wraps at this time. I'm just basically giving it a little bit of tension, but not a lot. I don't want to bind down and cut that squirmy, but I also want it to hold fast. So. There we go, and we'll just work our way back to the bend. And once again, I'm not doing tight wraps. I'll ch test it. If it pulls out, that means you tied it too tight. If it slips or moves, that means it's not tight enough. So I'm just going to lay down a little bit since we have a really nice thread base up here towards the middle of the shank, not near the rear, and just uh, give a little bit of dab of super glue to help bind that thread into the um, squirmy wormy and also to the shank of the hook, uh, securing it. Now, for the body of this, we're going to be using an uh, ice dub, similar to how he uses his orange dub, but I'm just going to use a white um, ice dub uh, um, by Simperfly, and uh, just to give a little bit more flash, and uh, uh, hey, come look at me, I'm a tasty treat look, and so I'll just spin a little bit on here, um, use my fingers, moisten them if I need to, I just don't like using um, uh, wax, because it stays on my fingers forever, but... Uh, there we go, and I'll just uh, go ahead and spin this around. I got that uh, squirmy tail that likes to go everywhere. That's the point of it, um, to provide lots of movement. So I'll just make sure to get around that so it's out of our way, and then we'll just go ahead and work our way up the body. And that really is not wanting to cooperate with me too much today. But uh, you get the point. We're working our way up here towards the uh, beginning, and uh, I think I'm going to add a little bit more here. Um, because we're going to be um, adding a, another material um, to create the egg and I just want to make sure I don't you know do too big of an egg so on the smaller patterns leave yourself a little bit less of a gap um, of course proportionate to size so um, for the egg um, we're going to be using Semper flies this is guard here chenille um, Tim likes to use uh, um, egg pattern material um, this is a new product by Semperfly. It comes on an elastic cord so you can't really pull it off like you would a traditional chenille but basically I cut a little bit to notch it and then I bind that elastic. It's got a little bit of stretch in the core and I'll bind it down and this is where I want it to be about the same size as my bead. 
So on a smaller, it won't be near as big. And then I'll go ahead and palmer this. This first wrap kind of preening that guard hair back. You can see that from packaging, this material is a little bit uh, matted down. And I want to get about two or three wraps. Uh, you know, if you want a big egg, then you could go four, but um, two to three is about perfect. And then I'm going to make sure I close it off with that third full wrap, and then I'll bind it down with my thread behind, and then a couple wraps in front, and then I'll do another behind and work my way to kind of really pull down on those wraps to secure them in. And then we'll go ahead and cut out our, our excess here and use that for another one. Uh, check for any uh, loose eye stub. I'll pull some of that uh, guard here chenille back and do a couple nice wraps here just to really secure it down. I'm doing really good thread tension and then we'll just do a three turn whip finish and we will be resining this. Um, so I'm not too particular on the, uh, the whip finish. I'll just go ahead and break that out and uh, we should be good to go. I'm going to get a, a little bit of this uh, Semperfly no tack uh, UV. Um, it's a good thick resin um, well, I, I shouldn't say it's not like thick, thick, but um, you can see it stays right there in that crack, uh, right where in, in the slot I want it to fill, and it's penetrating into the thread. I put a little bit too much, and so I'm going to go ahead and spread this around just a little bit into that thread, uh, just to kind of help hold everything together. And then we'll go ahead and cure it with our uh, our UV light for five to ten seconds. Uh, you could do 15 if you've got the time, but who has that extra five seconds in a day? So that's pretty much it. It's a quick pattern. Um, I've tested it uh, on a tournament this last weekend and it saved our day. Um, the last step you always want to do with this guard hair chenille because in the packing it is matted down. Go ahead and brush it out and you'll notice it looks very similar to some of your uh, egg pattern uh, material but it has a little bit longer of flash to it. Um, so in murky water I found it to be very beneficial but uh, look for any stragglers. That looks pretty pretty awesome um, it uh, saved the day this last uh, weekend in a tournament so I thought I'd share but uh, go ahead and tie some up most of these materials come in a lot of different patterns you could tie it up the exact same way Tim does it's been proven effective and I hope it works for you mm -hmm.